you've you've commented in, in before that you know you didn't start out to make work that was funny, funny. and that so that the sort of surprise of people saying your work was funny, and by now you you know that people are going to be struck by things in your work that they are amused by. But now, okay, so what if you wanted to make your series, yeah, Martha Graham? Funny. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, the good news is that I do make that, and people still laugh. I mean, <laughs> so it's like win or lose, it tends to be funny. Um, the new piece that, that, we, that we opened last night, the, there's one moment in it that absolutely breaks my heart. I mean, it's just, it's this um, making it, uh, it's really sort of the, one of the saddest things and people burst into laughter last night at this one moment. And so I, I, I think, to me, what I find sort of tragic, the rest of the world finds funny. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I love that, because I think that, that, I think that you know, tragedy and comedy are so close, and that we're so often laughing at moments that, you know, that feel like complete failures, that sometimes laughter is really the only way through something that's really challenging. And I think what we're doing so often on stage is um, being really sincere in our efforts and, and failing. And I think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, Every time. So, so do you think, um, I mean, so the audience is prepared, whether they've seen your work or not, they, they're prepared to be, you've given them permission to laugh. I hope so. So, so do you think that if, some other company were to perform that tr that very um, heartbreaking moment that it wouldn't strike people as funny because they hadn't been given permission to laugh in the same way. Possibly, I I think so. I mean, what I what we're as performers really trying to do is to create some level of familiarity with the audience so that we feel like um, we're more common that that we're more alike than we are different mm -hmm. that. We up here in front of the bright lights are not sort of like fabulous dancers who are who are doing things that that the audience couldn't do, but that we in front of the bright lights are doing things that are familiar, like stumbling mm -hmm. or like you know losing an earring, or that you know that we're sort of more on the same page, and and I think that that familiarity allows the audience to have um, more of a um, more of a uh, an vested interest in what's happening, and I think that I hope that that connection allows them to sort of laugh because they're empathizing mm -hmm. more than I hope. But again, who knows? More than they're laughing at us. Mm -hmm. I, I oftentimes feel like they're laughing with us mm -hmm. in a way of like, oh, that must have hurt. Or, uh, you know? <laughs> oh, I've lived through that. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. it, it, that's how it feels. So. So I was thinking about what you know, sort of what's my catalog of things that I could think of as funny in your work, and I think certainly the movement itself, that mm -hmm. that some of the movement material, the unexpected and unpredictable things mm -hmm. that happen, um, relationships with music or not, mm -hmm. and so could you just talk about some when when you're crafting, you've gotten rid of the thirty sections that don't work, and you're left left with these three treasures. How are you starting to assemble and craft? Mm -hmm the work once you've got the, the elements you're interested in? Mm -hmm. I think the, the element of surprise feels really essential, um, almost in the way that, you know, I think that um, it helps us as performers to feel like we're going through something that, that sort of has a beginning, middle, and an end, and that while we're at the beginning, we don't really know the middle, and so forth and so on. And so, um, Creating uh, interruptions within the material feels like that helps to keep us really present. Mm -hmm. um, the interruptions are obviously highly choreographed, so um, we're kind of like an actor saying, "Like, what do you mean?" You know, like we're having to believe it every time mm -hmm. or, or make it seem believable. Um, but I think it it creates the illusion that what's happening is really happening, that it, it isn't a, a sort of stunningly um, beautiful piece in which nothing's going to go wrong, but you'll be in awe the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's um, a, a sincere attempt to get through something. And 
that we're, each time we do it, we're really hoping for the best, <laughs> you know? And it, and it is choreographed to not be easy, to not work out the way we planned it in our minds, and that the interruptions and how we deal with them um, feel actual mm -hmm. in, in a way. There's a, an article in Vanity Fair in 2007 by Christopher Hitchens, I think it's a, a contrary article, uh, called Why Women Aren't Funny. And he <laughs> posits all these reasons why women aren't funny. And uh, one particular point he makes, besides that yeah. it's not safe for women to be funny because we mm. bear children, um, which I not, didn't wow. really follow that <laughs> argument. But the other thing he says is that humor takes intelligence, and women don't want to appear too smart because it will scare away men. So, um, <laughs> and he, he, he does uh, title it as a provocation, so he certainly knows what he's doing. And, right. Uh, all kinds of rebuttals, both men and women. We're talking about, in particular, how in the present it's more acceptable for women to be funny. That mm. in the past women could be funny or they could be pretty, but now <laughs> now we're in an era with Tina Fey being so fabulous, yes. uh, you know, et cetera. Yeah. And could you just what, what do you think about this? You're a woman. You're funny. You're smart, mm -hmm. and Thanks. how to own those things. Oh, she's also pretty, by the way. That goes about that. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, I think, th wow, scare away men. I like that. <laughs> um, I think some of it just has to do with being comfortable who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think that, that pretty as a goal is very interesting. I mean, there's not, a, there's not much to do within that. Um, I think... I think that funny is, is so, I mean, there's so many ways to be funny. Mm -hmm. um, I also feel like it, it has so much more of a connection to my life. I mean, my life definitely feels more like a comedy than a fashion show. You know, like mm -hmm. I don't, again, and I think it has to do with sort of being authentic to who you, who you are and, mm -hmm. and how you feel comfortable um, and how you're creating your, how you're creating yourself, how you're sort of imagining the, the movie of your life, you know, and I, I feel like my life is such a good comedy. Um, and so I, I think that's, I think that that's my work as well. I mean, there's something to, um, having the confidence, I think, to not take yourself too seriously mm -hmm. that makes being an artist in this day and age uh, much easier. Because it's not an easy business, right? I mean, people it hasn't have to, been for me. No. Yeah. I mean, it, and people take it very seriously because right. it's very hard. But it doesn't have to be the content of your work, is is what you're saying. Well, and I think it doesn't even have to be. I mean, it is hard. I mean, there there are sort of not to deny the the obvious realities of lack of funding or you know just pure challenges. But I think that those challenges can be overwhelming, or I think they can be you know, obstacles that are a part of your, the comedy of your life.